So one thing we hear a lot about in thermodynamics are reversible processes. Um, and so we're going to uh, look at a reversible uh, process um, in the case of uh, some system, maybe it's a, a cylinder full of gas or something, and it is uh, warming up to the temperature of uh, this thermal reservoir. So for a reversible process, the uh, total entropy change of the, of the universe must be equal to zero. Uh, so uh, that's what we're going to look at here real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate the uh, entropy change. So let's say that um, this uh, thermal reservoir out here is at a uh, temperature, um, we'll, we'll call it Tf in this case, um, because that's going to be the final temperature of this system inside of it. So it will gradually warm up to the same temperature as this thermal reservoir. The system is initially at Ti, of course. So uh, let's look at the, the change in entropy. So, so for the for the system, oh, by the way, uh, the system will just say it has a heat capacity of C. Okay. Um, there we go. All right. Um, so the total entropy uh, change. Uh, first, uh, the the. Um, the system will not be at the same temperature throughout this whole process, obviously. It will start cold and warm up uh, slowly. So the temperature of this is changing. So we will have to integrate over um, over, the, over the whole process, all right? Um, so the way this is going to work is we are looking at the um, we're looking at the, the the heat that is flowing into a system and at what temperature is the system at as as the heat flows in or thermal energy. All right. <laughs> so. Um, here for for the system, uh, we the the heat is just going to uh, be equal to uh, so so the the little amount of thermal energy is going to be equal to the heat capacity, which is a constant multiplied by uh, whatever small change in temperature there is. All right, so we're going to just plug that into this. Uh, so since T is changing over this process, it's nice to integrate over T. So we have, uh, we'll start at Ti and go to Tf. We have a C dt over T. All right. So the total energy uh, transferred uh, to this is um, which uh, I will call uh, delta uh, delta Q and that's C um, so so think of just integrating this equation here all right so the, the total energy integrated over the temperature well that's just the difference in temperature, the, the final temperature, which is higher uh, than the lower temperature. So, so this is the total amount of energy flowing into the system. And the reason we did this is because um, when we look at the uh, the total energy, or when we when we look at this integral here, um, for the thermal reservoir out here, the temperature does not change. All right, so it's a constant, so it can it can come out of the out of the integral, and then um, then we need to look at how much energy is flowing into this reservoir. 
well, um, energy is, is just flowing into the system from the reservoir. Um, but we do know how much, how much that is. And so the energy, f um, you could say, flowing into this reservoir is actually minus the energy flowing into the system. Essentially, um, it's, it's just energy flowing out of the reservoir, right? Anyway, so it's just, there's just a minus sign here, is what we're trying to say. Uh, so there's a minus sign. Uh, the temperature over the whole process is Tf. And the energy, once we, um, like we did this little integral of dq, um, we, get, we get this. So we have uh, C Tf minus Ti. So this is the entropy change of the reservoir. So notice that uh, the the um, the heat uh, there's there's the energy of the system or the entropy of the system here is increasing and the entropy of the reservoir is decreasing. And in order for this to for this process to move forward, uh, we need the well, the entropy increase of the system will be larger than the decrease of the uh, entropy in the, in the reservoir. So that the, the total entropy change of the universe is positive. So let's go ahead and write that out real quick. Um, let's use black so we don't get confused with the colors. So uh, I'll factor out a C. All right, when we take the integral of 1 over t, we get a natural log. And then we'll have a tf divided by ti. OK, and then we, we factored out this c already. Um, I'll just say plus uh, ti over tf, uh, putting this minus sign in through. And then we'll just have a tf over tf at the end, so minus 1. Oops. Went off the page there. All right, so this is the um, this is the uh, total change in entropy for the universe uh, for this process. All right, so um, in talking about reversible processes, let's let's just look at what happens if we. Anyway, let's see if we're able to make this zero. So what, what would happen if we, um, instead of just putting the system in contact with one thermal reservoir, we, at, at TF, what if we first warm it up with respect to a different reservoir that is at some lower temperature, and then we take it and put it in, in, in then, then, then we put it in contact with this reservoir at the final temperature. So let's uh, go ahead and calculate the change in entropy uh, for that situation. All right, so we have a uh, change in entropy. Uh, um, how, should, how should we do this? Uh, T I to uh, T, um, let's, let's just call this TM, just for T middle or something like that, all right? Uh, plus the change in entropy. So we're then taking it from that middle temperature to the final temperature, all right? So basically, we, ju we just use uh, this equation twice, except we um, plug in different things for the TI and the TF. So uh, let's just pick uh, some numbers um, so, um, and just see what, 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 what we get. So um, let's just say uh, TI, just pick nice round numbers. Let's say 100 Kelvin, okay? So for Tm, we'll come to that in a second, and Tf, let's say we're just going up to 200 Kelvin, okay? <coughs> uh, 
All right. Just pick these because they're round. All right. Uh, for TM, uh, what would we expect if uh, if TM is equal to TI? Well, we wouldn't expect anything to happen for the first process because the temperatures are the same, so no heat will flow. Um, and then, uh, and then we would just have basically one process that takes all the all the effort or the, the, where all the interesting stuff happens, right? Where the heat actually flows. There would just be the second process from 100 Kelvin to 200 Kelvin. All right, so um, if, if we set TM uh, at TI, we expect we'd get the same entropy change as we would uh, back in the original case, where we just put it right in, in, in touch with the, with the TF. Um, and the same thing goes if we set TM equal to TF. Uh, so let's set it right in the middle, um, just since um, whatever effect we, we might see goes to zero at both ends, it makes sense, hey, maybe the middle is, is, a, is a good place to, to see what, if, if there's any difference or how big it, how big it can get. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we want, uh, first let's look at uh, the case where we go straight from TI to TF. All right, so that's this case right here. We, we put it right in, th in thermal contact with the reservoir at TF. All right, so we just uh, are going to have this. Um, so let me write below here. So this is a 100K2, directly to 200K. All right, uh, we just have C, and then we have natural log of so it would be 200 over 100, which is just 2, plus uh, Ti over Tf, so 100 over 200, which is just 1 half minus 1. All right, so let's just write it out real quick. Natural log of 2. We can even use this parenthesis bracket thing from before. Uh, so plus 1 half minus 1 is just minus 1 half. All right, so that's our answer if we go straight shot, 100K to 200K. Now let's take this uh, middle approach where we, we first put it in, so we have two reservoirs now. First we put it in contact with the reservoir at 150 Kelvin, let everything equilibrate. Then we move the system to a reservoir of 200 Kelvin and, and then warm it up to our final temperature. Let's see what the total change in entropy is. Um, so this would be a Ti to Tm, a Tm to Tf. I should have written this down here, we'd have more space. So uh, this was 100k to 150, and a 150k to 200k. All right. Um, I'll just draw an arrow. Looks lame, but okay. So we have C, all right, and then um, and then we'll just uh, plug into this formula. Okay, so we have uh, the first process, natural log. We go to 150k. Uh, from 100 plus we have 100 over 150 minus 1 and then so that's uh, this change in entropy real quick and then uh, looking at the second one we have our heat capacity again now we're doing natural log of 200 divided by 150 all right plus 150 divided by 200 minus 1. So let's let's just go ahead and uh, look at this again. Let me try and write this out proper. 
I won't mess with all the little temperatures I wrote down there this time. So here's our two-step process, right? So we can combine these and, and we've got the, the C going on uh, out here. Um, so natural log, those can be split into natural log of 150 minus natural log of 100 and natural log of 200 minus natural log of 150. So the 150s are going to cancel out and we can recombine uh, in, into the natural log of 200 over 100, which looks familiar from right up here. Okay, so plus 100 over 150 plus 150 over 200 minus 2. All right. And rather than write the whole thing out, this is a natural log of 2. So um, let's just see. Um, let's see what these, what these numbers uh, come out to be. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll plug them in and, and, and get these real quick. Okay, so here are the numbers that I got. Remember C is the heat capacity of the system, all right? Um, so if, assuming I used a calculator correctly, whatever, um, I get 0.193 and then I, and 0.1098, even threw an extra digit on the end here for you mostly because I wrote it down wrong at first. Um, didn't round it. All right, the, the, what we see here though is that this is not quite, but it's almost half of, of, the, of the previous one. So, so we see that we've decreased the um, change in entropy of the whole universe by, by using these two separate heat reservoirs. All right. So, what would happen if, uh, instead of doing this in two steps, what if we broke it into four? So, suppose we had a reservoir at 125. So, we go to a reservoir. We first put it in in a, a step to 125. Um, I, I guess this is three steps, right? At 125, 150, 175, and 200. Um, then each of these pieces would also be smaller and we'd end up with something even smaller here. You know, Maybe it divides again by roughly, roughly a factor of two or so. Who knows, we'd have to work it out. Um, <coughs> but, uh, but yeah, so the point is that the more steps we take, the smaller and smaller the change in entropy gets. So if we want a reversible process um, for the case of, of heating our system up in a in the thermal reservoir here, what we have to do is have an infinite line of reservoirs. Each one of them is a tiny bit warmer than the last, and we move our system as if on a conveyor belt from one to the other to the other, or move the reservoirs, whatever you want to do. Um, but we very, very slowly and infinitely heat it up an infinitesimal amount at a time with a huge line of reservoirs, and then we're able to um, that the entropy change of the whole unit of the universe as a whole is going to be zero, and we will have a reversible process. So um, this helps uh, helps us because um, if we can find uh, a reversible process um, between two points, uh, we know that entropy is a state variable. Um, so then the entropy of the system uh, between those two points is also, um, no, no matter which path we do take, which is non-reversible, uh, we, can, we can find uh, what the entropy of the system is by instead finding a reversible path, at least re reversible uh, during at least even, uh, even part of the way um, between those two points. So, um, yeah.